Oh, groovy! We've already taken a look at some of the most rare and elusive games in the Silent Hill universe, and I feel they were all pretty interesting. Not all of them were complete winners to the point of being considered hidden gems, but I think that today's topic, Silent Hill Orphan, might actually have the right to be considered as such. So, elation and jubilation, gamers from all around the world. I am Lucian, the World Gamer. Welcome to my show, where we talk about everything gaming. Retro, new, import, rare stuff and weird games. Like today's topic. After last time checking the forgotten Silent Hill experience on PSP, today we continue our quest to find more oddball and unorthodox spin-off in a franchise that has way more of them than you think, as we take a look at Silent Hill Orphan, the elusive trilogy of horror adventure games released on mobile phones again? Wait, 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 wait! These are actually good! Must be on drugs. They tried to make it seem like an orphanage. Mysterious, gory and atmospheric are all fitting qualities to describe this series of horror adventure games set in the world of Silent Hill. The first game released in North America as Silent Hill Orphan and in Europe as just Silent Hill between 2007 and 2008. We are going to stick to the North American name because first, it's way cooler. And secondly, we have already taken a look at another mobile game called Just Silent Hill and it was itself a very interesting game, being the only RPG in the series and it was almost lost media. Feel free to check out my review after watching this video. You're going to like this. The second and third game in the Orphan Trilogy will be released in Europe as Silent Hill Mobile 2 and 3. Moreover, they were all localized in multiple languages, so more world gamers can dive into these titles. The developers decided to go for a point-and-click horror adventure with first-person interface and huge emphasis on puzzles. That's not to say that there isn't any action. Sometimes it's necessary to draw your weapon and hit the abominations that infest the orphanage. Have you got a gun? While the games can look indiscernible from one another at first, each one would add some real improvements to the base gameplay, making it quite a nice evolution. Let's start with the first game, Silent Hill Orphan, which takes place in the abandoned Shepherd Orphanage, where 30 years prior, almost all children inside were murdered, except for three children, Ben, Moon and Karen. These are our protagonists. And that's when I'll stop to avoid spoilers in case any of you guys wants to try these games for yourselves. But to hook you just enough, just know that a certain Alessa is involved. Honestly though, the story is very interesting and pretty dark even by Silent Hill standards. Is it all dark for you too? Once you start the game with Ben, you are immediately thrown at the entrance of the orphanage and you can already see some pretty detailed backdrops very artistic and woody. Contrary to the mobile Silent Hill RPG from earlier, here the graphics are not digitized, but rather fully hand-drawn. Also, unlike the Silent Hill RPG, you can move the cursor around freely, and you can use it to examine objects, interact with them, collect items, and navigate the environment. Exploration and puzzle solving will be your bread and butter in this game, but again, there are some action sequences in the form of actual battles against the monstrosities that infest the orphanage. Technically, the game defends itself pretty well, with very moody environments, if somewhat static. The colors were a little too monochrome as well, maybe, but I think this was a stylistic choice more than anything else, and it honestly added to the atmosphere more than detracting from it. I usually like to judge the atmosphere of a horror game based on how immersive it feels, especially when playing in the dark. An orphan passes this test with flying colors.
One of the best aspects in the visual department is the sheer amount of details of most backdrops, which also help in the gameplay department, since you will need to do some pixel hunting to scavenge some of the key items from time to time. Huh? Are you blind or something? But a point-and-click adventure lives and dies by its puzzles, and unfortunately some of them are based on more logic, which can be really frustrating at times, forcing you to needless trial and error. That's not to say that Orphan was completely devoid of satisfaction once I figured out some of them with few tries. I think it boiled my brain a little. I wish the navigation was also done better, as it's really clunky. To move to another location, you need to point the cursor in the specific direction at the borders of the screen. You can't really turn around in these rooms and corridors, so when you want to backtrack, you have to point the cursor at the lower part of the screen. But it feels as if you're moving backwards, moonwalking just like Michael Jackson. It's weird and kinda broke my immersion a little. Thankfully this will be addressed in the later games. Don't worry. You'll know soon enough. While the story is good, the pace of the game is that of a typical point and click, which is to say, pretty slow. Thankfully, to spice up a very reflexive gameplay, there are some monster encounters, in which Orphan turns into a shooting minigame. Kudos to the developers for the monster sprites. They look great, and spritz blood all over the place when hit, and their design is grotesque and unsettling. Have you ever seen such aberrations? The weapon named Carcer also gets all shaky, which makes sense considering the protagonist is no trained soldier. Exploration is also encouraged and rewarded with items you can use in battle, like bullets and medikits. I wish battles were more frequent though, since they're really fun. Another nice mechanic, lifted directly from the awesome Silent Hill Origins, is the shifting between the real world and the other world through the circle-shaped red symbols on various walls. It works exactly like it does in Origins, and it involves riddles with things happening in one plane affecting the other, like opening doors in one plane also open them in the other. And in this regards, the map option also comes pretty handy. Great stuff. The music is also pretty moody when it is there, which is not that often. Overall, I'd say that the positives really outshine the negatives. The sometimes out there puzzles can be an annoyance, along with the clunky navigation system, but the spooky atmosphere, detailed graphics, the engaging story and downright grotesque enemy design make sure to keep you glued to the small screen, especially if you're into classic point-and-click adventures. And the game lasts just a few hours, so you might even run through it in one sitting. And most of the flaws would also be addressed in the future games anyway. Speaking of which, with the first Orphan we were off to a good start, but we have two more games to go. Now, I will go a little quicker with this, because Mobile 2 and 3 just added to the base mechanics of the first game, with some nice quality of life improvements. But let's discuss the plot a little bit first. So, these are direct continuations of the first game, but with different protagonists. So if you want to get the full picture, you will need to play all three games. Or you can even consider it as one single game divided into three parts, maybe. That aside though, the improvements are massive. First, the environments are even more detailed than before, with some backdrops even showcasing some cool animations. There is also more variety with the use of colors, which is also pretty nice. But I feel that the most important change is done to the movement mechanics. You can finally turn around when navigating corridors, so you can stop a moon walking backwards when backtracking. In Mobile 3 you can even use the zero button to instantly exit the room, rather than having to drag the car sole to the lower part of the screen. It's clear that the developers took note of the feedback from the previous games, and it's always a joy to see when they do this. Unfortunately, Mobile 3 also has some inexplicable drawbacks compared to the previous games. In spite of being the most recent one, with the best graphics and easiest navigation system, the first problem is the map, which I found worse in every way, as it doesn't show where you are, what doors you unlocked, no puzzle rooms, nothing of the sort. The maps are naked as a newborn baby. Why? Why? In the previous games, the map was extremely useful and filled with small markers to help you remember which room is what. Also, when it comes to combat, the weapon is drawn automatically in Mobile 3. After doing it right in Orphan and Mobile 2, where you could decide when to draw it by pressing 1. 
And I think this added another layer of tension during combat encounters in my opinion. Enemy design stayed consistently creepy in all three titles though, but then again, these encounters are so rare, it just makes me wish they were more frequent. Indeed, if there is a complaint I can move to all three games, aside from the moon logic of some of the puzzles, is that they all wasted the opportunity to better balance the survival horror aspect with the point and click based mechanics. I wish it leaned more into its survival horror origins, with more monsters and more resource management, which is there, just only slightly present. These games are more 70-80% point and click and 30-20% survival horror. Which is a pity, as the developers went through the hassle of implementing all these survival horror mechanics, it could have worked. Especially with the spooky environments and monsters, they just didn't have enough confidence to go all the way with the survival horror aspects. Yeah, you're right. Still, I would lie if I told you I did not enjoy the Orphan trilogy. In fact, it's pretty much the opposite. All these games share such an unnerving atmosphere that it's been a real pleasure to immerse myself in the dark corridors of the Shepherd Orphanage, jumping on my seat at the sudden appearance of a disturbing monster, seeing them all crumbling into pieces with the extremely detailed animations. Details put in equal measures in the unsettling environments. So yeah, if you are into old school point and click adventures or if you absolutely need to play everything Silent Hill, you might find something I even dare to call hidden gems in the Orphan Trilogy. But this is just one guy's opinion on the internet, so now I want to know yours down in the comments. Did you know about this trilogy of games? Will you check them out? What is your favorite game in the series? Share your thoughts or memories in the comment section down below. Also make sure to smash the like button, as it really does help my channel grow. And if you enjoyed this video and are a Silent Hill fanatic, make sure to check out the rest of the video series in which I dig up more obscure Silent Hill games, like the elusive story of play novel Silent Hill for the Game Boy Advance and its Lost Media DLC. Next time, join me on my quest to find even more forgotten Silent Hill games. Want a hint? I'm pretty sure you will never be able to escape this one. Why can't you just tell me? Subscribe so that you get notified of my future uploads and you will also help a fellow gamer out. But most importantly, I want to thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. I will be seeing you in my next one, but until then, stay safe, play safe world gamers.